Welcome to Down to Herf, the podcast for cigar smokers, whiskey drinkers, and for the people just looking to kick back, light up, and have a good time. I'm your host, Jerry, and I'm joined by, as always, my co-host, Gio and Caleb. Fellas, 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 how are we doing on this fine Tuesday night? Nope. <laughs> Jeff says nope. Nope. So we got Jeff back from Rock Elite in the house. Dude, how you been, man? I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm happy to be back. It's been a pleasure. Uh, fortunate to be back because last time I was here back to back nights. And uh don't think that'll happen uh anytime soon again, but that was uh it was awesome to be back for your pick uh, the second night. But uh you know, we got a lot of talk about with Penelope. Um, you know, we're sipping on some Penelope right now and uh our pick our pick experience, man. You know, we gotta dive into that. But uh everything's been good, golf's good, life's good, everything's good, man. Hey. Got the got the fucking shades on. That's good because it's bright as shit in this studio. <laughs> I feel like I'm out in the sun right now. I don't even know what time it is, but I feel like I'm getting sunburned. Here. Catching a tan, yeah. catching a tan, my man. Gail, yeah, how you doing today, bud? Um, you know the dog days of summer are over, so uh, you know things are getting a little chillier here in Buffalo, Fuck cooling you. down <laughs> outside of that that nasty hot heat from the dog days. Um, still loving on the milfs. That ain't never gonna change. And um, Gio, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. I. Just very happy I never have to hear Dog Days of Summer again until next year. Well, we could play the song if you want to hear it, too, by Florence and the Machines. I hate you. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Bring back those early 2000 vibes? No. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know. <laughs> There's a reason that we I made sure I got that, like, nod meme and then you just smiling on that one, like, that post we had on Instagram. Just it, it summarizes sometimes the shit you say and how it makes me feel. We have a dynamic like that. It yes. works out sometimes. Uh, Jerry, how you doing over there with the screwdriver slash wrench slash uh, Mr. Mechanic over there? <laughs> Bob the Builder. I'm chilling right now. Uh, having a little trouble with this uh, arm boom right now, but uh, I'm working on it over here. So, uh, oh. Gio, that being said, why don't we get into the cigar, buddy? All right, guys. We got a, uh, a first for the Herf here. We got the Fratello Arlequin Corona Gorda. New release in the line. Uh, it's the sixth edition. It's going to be using a Mexican San Andreas wrapper. Ecuadorian Habano binder and fillers from Peru and Nicaragua. Uh, it's made out of the Hoya de, Nic- Hoya de Nicaragua factory in Esteli. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, there's a mouthful right there. Mm-hmm. You're used to that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I got a zinger in there. Uh, you got, got, you got him. You got him. Well, to nope. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, correct. No, no, I'm not used to that. But, uh, these actually are going to be retailing at about ten fifty a stick. Uh, new debut from the PCA show. You know, Fratello had a pretty solid booth. They were very nice enough to hook us up with these cigars. Just want to say thank you for that. You know, appreciate it. And, you know, allowing us to put out these content with, you know, extra things. Because, you know, Caleb doesn't like to show up to fun stuff. Caleb's a whack man. He, uh, he, he missed out on a great time. I'll be there next year. Yeah, I'll be there. Sure. Yeah, Caleb's always whack. Uh, speak, speaking of whack, Jerry, how's that haircut? Yo, what the fuck, bro? Yo, first of all, I have this beautiful mullet. Ugh, for anybody watching the show, I don't know if you're able to see the back, but my wife absolutely fucking hates it, and I'm doing what I can out here, so I love it. Do you let people pet your mustache as well? All I needed to make this thing just so perfect are the awesome sunglasses that Jeff decided to wear tonight. <laughs> I see him just post the pic, so it's up there. It's gonna Yo, be awesome. He had that duck lip selfie on point. You know, look out for the future Rock Elite influencer division. We yeah. know he loves uh-huh. them so much. I love influencers. <laughs> Who's your favorite influencer, Jeff? Oh, <laughs> I, I love. Uh, he's not. I don't know. I, I always call him. Uh, I don't know what I I uh, call him, but I sent him some stickers the other day and. That was about a month ago or so, and I didn't even put his name. I think I put influencer and uh, <laughs> Bur- Berman's Bourbon, Berman's Bourbon at Berman's Bourbon. Such a great guy, but um, I don't think he's ever not liked the b- free bottle he's received. <laughs> but no, he's he's such a good guy. Um, really good pal. He's been on uh, a pick or two of mine, and 
very fortunate but uh but no it's uh i'm happy to be back and discuss this penelope pick we did man you want to get right into that or i I don't i'm kind of i'm intrigued by what you're doing over there i'm making it work we're good baby we're good good, good, this is gonna look a little different but we're good (laughs) yeah well i mean the penelope pit i can't talk right now fuck the penelope mush mouth the penelope pick we did uh at the distillery definitely an interesting experience we talked about how the state of jersey alone sucks but we i don't know how uh direct we got involved with it but I feel like you can explain the process on how those traditionally go a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, unfortunate. Um, that, I mean, like I said, like I said um, before we start, I'm not trying to bash Penelope because there's a lot of people that love Penelope. I think we picked a great barrel. Um, I think the pick experience was about a three out of ten, um, and you know. Is that good? Three out of ten. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Had worse. Yeah. Well, hey, don't two threes make a six? Like you know, after no, the it's, morning that's a good time. You know, we we try. You know, the thing the, the thing with me, it's like you travel there, right? You hope to be not wine and dine, but it's like let's give me a good experience. You know, I knew what we were getting ourselves into. I knew it was small location, which is fine. Um, but you know, you get there. I don't know how the guy seemed pretty knowledgeable. I'm not sure what his role was there. He's definitely not the barrel pick guy. Um, and then when we did the tasting, you know, nothing was asked if we've ever tried Penelope before, you know, usually a lot of places will bring out, you know, their, their normal core items for you to try. If you haven't, um, it's fine that they didn't. Um, I'm going to reiterate, this is not bashing on Penelope uh, episode because we did a pick a really good, a really good barrel with them. Um, but then when we got to the pick, you know, first of all, they had like 33 barrels there on site. Um, not, and when you ask like, Oh, you're, you're doing 80,000 cases. Well, where are you doing those out of? Cause you're not doing it here. Um, it's kind of a tight lipped, uh, process, which is, you know, fine. Um, but you know, we got down to the pick. The first two were absolutely garbage. Um, the third one was, pretty stellar and the fourth one wasn't too bad if i remember correctly but the third one was really good uh, we on, only got one glass for the four four samples so we really couldn't compare back and forth but luckily we only had to compare between two and not all four because the first two were out like asap, ASAP. Cut. dog shit They're yeah cut. I mean, ASAP. yeah but caleb liked the one i remember he's no like, I, I want more of that no it was the it yeah, was like that. number two i think actually yeah. it, one of them was like an architect pick so it was almost like a 99 percent corn yeah. and that was one like, of the ones that i did and like I, and i you know i do remember this when he asked like do we want to know what each one were was and i said no i want everything blind he was kind of like thrown off by that a little bit because I don't want to know what we're drinking. I don't want, cause I knew we had a couple of different, uh, expressions of theirs. Um, but I don't want to know. I want to, I want to pick on taste and not because of proof or year or whatever it is. I want to, you know, just pick Dude, This is entertaining myself. Just watching mullet man over here. Dude, I, I broke my arm. <laughs> Dude, that thing is Lucy. Not Lucy, my little Lucy. arm, but you, the, the you, arm, my mic arm. You've broke it's a broken. lot of shit tonight. It's broke. It's broke. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, anyways, we get we get to the, you know, number three. It's freaking solid. It's a really good pick. And when we got, we you know, we all came together and we're like, oh, yeah, number three is the winner. And uh, he's like, oh, you picked a half barrel. We're like, I'm going to pull up the picture of the... Uh, of the actual pick. Yeah, go ahead. Mm. It's an absolute beauty. Yeah. It's a fucking beaut. Yeah. It is a beauty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're a fan of if you're a fan of jugs and the mommy milkers like myself, well add this to your trophy collection. <laughs> Penelope Cruz. Looking looking great. <laughs> Tostado Penelope. Well, you know, I it's kind of what I go for in a woman. Knockers. <laughs> so don't say my poor wife, because she's very lucky to have me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're shot. You're fucking shot. But no, it's, uh, you know, it was unfortunate to like, you know, when you ask questions like, well, where are the other, you know, this is going to be a hundred bottle yield. And fortunately we were able, you know, when the barrel came, it was 150. Hopefully we got the right barrel, um, <laughs> which we'll know tomorrow. Um, but you know, I'm, you know, I'm, po- you know, I'm, you know, I trust those guys that they're going to send us what we picked. And, um, 
But no, the overall experience was a little rough. Uh, luckily that we picked a great barrel to uh, bring back to this area. Um, you know, that's the, that was the main, that was the most important thing. I don't really care about tours and, you know, all the other stuff. Um, I'm there, we're there to try whiskey and pick something that everybody's going to like. And I think everybody's going to like this one. Um, it's a five year, five month, uh, char level five barrel and it was heavily toasted. Um, char five being the, the highest char level you can go was maybe why we liked it, um, the most. Um, because it was, um, uh, from my recollection, it was, it, you know, brought in the, it was really more into, it got into some, a little wood, a little, a lot of caramel, if I remember correctly. I can't really remember the tasting notes. It's been, I don't even know what month we almost went there. Almost 90, 90 days. days. That's it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, what, March? Uh, it was like May, May 2nd. May like, 3rd. Oh, shit. May 3rd was the exact date. Man. I, I actually I, don't, I can't remember yesterday so I actually have my tasting notes from when we were at the tasting so oh, yeah I'm sure these are gonna be accurate yeah let's see what you what you got so there, this Caleb. is from what I remember keep in mind it's been like 90 plus days so um for the one we chose uh, I had toasted marshmallows and graham cracker and a light smoke to it <laughs> and it's the most smoke you can possibly get no like I don't I don't mean like smoky as in like this char from the barrel that you're tasting I meant smoky as in like the graham cracker, the marshmallow reminded me of like being around a smoke. So I had like a little bit of smoke, smoky, you know, campfire smell taste to it. That's that's all the things what, that it reminded me of. What was your tasting of. notes on number one, two, and four? Uh, one light. So one was light honey, floral. I said it gave me a light tingle and some. Uh, <laughs> was it a good tingle? <laughs> a light tingle. I think I think you like number two though. Um. Or maybe it was one. No, it was four. It was three and four that I liked the best. I don't think so. I think you liked one of the first two that we all You definitely liked. did because we gave you shit for it. Yeah, we did. Um, I don't know. Two, I had darker caramel color, uh, a lot of caramel taste, light and easy. Maybe like two. Oh, light, Popcorn, e- pop- light, and, light and easy like your shirt? Nilfs? Light. Nilfs, baby. <laughs> Man, I love farting shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that one. Um, so you know what, Jeff? I wanted to ask another question about the pick and the whole experience. Um, I know we said the... Nope. I know we said we didn't know about the bottle count because at one point we were told 16 cases of six, and now we got like 150. Yeah. So we don't know how that ended up and what happens. Um, math. I got, well, <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't work out for everyone. The math isn't mathing here. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so when it comes to something like this, and the, and you just said, hopefully we get the right barrel and what's not, we'll see what happens when you taste it. Like, is there anything that you can do? And if it's not the right pick, do you send it back? Or is it just like, you got it? And it's like, this is what we have to do when we, Go from here. There's always ways you can send it back, okay. but I uh, I don't want to think about that right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see uh, tomorrow. Um, I'm you know I don't want to you know put those negative thoughts, but yes, there. I think you have like 30 days to send it back. Um, I'm not quite sure. We I have never done that before. I've never. Uh, hopefully that never happens. Um, but uh, yes, um, or you just raise fucking hell and you get <laughs> your own rio bottling or something i don't know um you know that's what we're drinking on right now is the penelope rio it was a honey amberana finish um very limited limited uh bottling in the in the states and um you know it's it's quite uh it's like candy it's delicious it really is good too. It's a ninety-eight proof. Is that uh, what it is? 98? Yeah, ninety-eight, forty-nine percent. Uh, dude, the I mean, this is like it just reminds me of like for some reason like Christmas. Like if you were drinking this and it's freezing cold out, like I think on a yeah on a hot day though, man, you just I don't know, like a that's lot. That's why of, I said oh, Christmas because it's not a hot day. <laughs> yeah, well, even a hot day it would come out well, but like like a lot of people are bashing um um. Amberana because it brings out a lot of like uh what's that uh sweetness or? the the candy that was like fire uh cinnamon 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 candies back when you were young like the fireball the fireball fireball, candy. fireball yeah, like the whiskey that's what people are you know referring and wow. amberana can the honey definitely brings out a different uh, uh taste to it but uh I can see some amberana being like almost those fireball type things. If you, I don't know if you guys dabble in any of the amberana finishes besides this one, but um, 
I think this is the first one I've ever had. I, yeah. And if it's something you don't have frequently, then I probably have never had another one. I have a couple Amberanas coming from another uh, supplier coming soon, but you is, know, people people love them, people hate them, but you know that's the that's the nature of my world is uh, you know you're trying to pick for a num- number of people, and hopefully you uh, gauge interest from more than you know half of your crowd, half of your members, and uh, um, and I think uh, we've been pretty successful in the the five years we've been chucking along doing this. So I did want to touch on that. Uh, yeah. Obviously, being on the network now, um, you know, tell us a little bit about Rock Elite. Yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of new listeners to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you guys do? Is it a national thing? Uh, how do you guys go through your picks? How many members do you guys have? You know, yada yeah, yada. Yeah, so yada. we're we're we definitely have uh, uh, over 500 people. Um, you know, a lot of locals. Um, you know, we're pretty nationally known, I think, to the bourbon community. Um, but you know, we've, we do quite, quite a lot of picks a year and, um, you know, we, we just really try to find those brands that people aren't chasing after, you know, like Bland's picks or anything Buffalo trace or anything, um, really anything that is, uh, you know, people are chasing. We, I like to find those brands like, you know, Starlight, they were nothing uh, a while ago and they hit, we hit home run with a lot of their picks you know they're doing some really cool stuff in indiana um you know rare character national barrel company you know i've done a shitload of picks with those boys um you know they're awesome uh, james and michael are uh, close friends they probably hate me from asking millions of questions but um you know i go down there and we we are we're always picking barrels with them um, and then, you know, like today I, uh, I put a post up and said, Hey, um, what do people want to see in 2024? And it was really nice. Cause I, I wrote down like, I think 28 names or ton of 28 different, uh, people or, uh, providers I've never even heard of like 13th colony. I've seen the bottling, but I haven't really dissected into that brand. Um, some other places that, you know, I thought were lacking a couple of years ago when I tried and haven't revisited like Wyoming, you know, I had people in my DMS today, like all about, all about them. Um, so it's, you know, it's not what I want. If I wanted everything, I would get four roses and willets all day. If I could, <laughs> unfortunately, those are the two toughest things to get. Um, but you know, it's, uh, when you go to a pick, you know, you get a group of people, if it's Australia, Ireland, France, you know, we're not just doing bourbon and rye. We're doing Armagnac wines. We're doing Australian single malts, hopefully going to Scotland and uh, Mexico next year uh, for d- doing a little tequila and mezcal. Um, so it's really opening up uh, the markets. I mean, I've looked into our own seltzer. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I have. My man's trying to literally get everybody, everyone, everything. No, I mean, anything but vodka, I haven't really, I mean. I, I'll be completely honest. When it comes to vodka, there's, like, three vodkas that I consider, like, regularly drinkable. Yeah, well, yeah, who cares? Yeah, it's, like, you're always mixing it with something. No, who's, right. Who's like, drinking vodka on the rocks? Or, nobody. Not many people. Mm-mm. Unless you're, like, fucking 85 Russian. years old, probably. Or Russian. Um, yeah. yeah, that too. <laughs> but, um, no, it's, I'm I'm all about being that person that's not doing what everybody else is doing. Um, you know, we have something coming in October. Um, that is absolutely going to be absolutely amazing. I cannot wait. It's been, a it's been about two and a half years and make, uh, you know, working on this project, this Irish whiskey. Um, and, um, I can't wait. Um, no one's done it before camera yeah what about it it's, it's oh not, my oh. god dude yeah it's okay sorry uh, dude is my your, mind is, is right no your first dude episode? my fucking <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome my to, fucking arm boom fucking bro welcome the, to down to her the first podcast ever <laughs> <laughs> welcome new listeners it's all right jerry you know nope. jerry didn't it's, get a lot I think, of sleep i think last it's night. the i think it's the freaking uh mullet <laughs> <laughs> It's frying his brain. He's becoming Theo Vaughn slowly. <laughs> it's frying his brain. 
<laughs> but no, it's uh, you know, I, I'm always looking for <laughs> new... <laughs> <laughs> limp dick Mike there. <laughs> hit her with hit her with the old floppy. That's an old college trick right there. I'm always looking for <laughs> this is <laughs> this got really I wish weird. people were here. Dude, my... I think this works. We need a live <laughs> actually he doesn't have to move it anymore. We need a live looks like you're going to the studio to do some hip hop or something. Yeah. Dude, do a freestyle for us. Just hit us up with one. This right. shit is fucked, bro. Fuck <laughs> it. I'm with this though. This is how we're doing yeah, it today. It mullet, I feel better now. Mullet Mike. I feel better now. That's good. Okay. I feel better that you feel better. Yeah. We all feel better. <laughs> but um I don't even know what I was saying, but uh, uh, you were going on with the uh, yeah all your picks like the good clown guilty one. Yeah, no, yeah, the clown guilty is gonna be fire. Um, I don't know anybody that's ever picked that old of a whiskey and what the presentation. I'm not gonna get into yeah. it, but um, it is gonna be. Yeah, I saw some pictures. It is it's it's stupid. Cool. It's it's yeah, ridiculous. Awesome. Um, but no, it's all about you know being different and um, trying to figure out what other people want and just not me. All right. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, with that said, I mean, you've obviously heard of brands here. What's the uh, the new one you've done for 2023 that you got coming down the pipe here that you think you're really excited that, like, you know, is something you haven't done before? Well, I have a rare character that's releasing uh, in September. Um, you know, Pablo, I would consider him a close friend of mine. He is, uh, he's sourcing from some really good places and putting out some phenomenal picks. Um, I know I've done a million NBCs, but you can't go wrong with NBC. Uh, we have some Blue Run coming. We have uh, we have a lot of different things. Uh, you know, I went to France for uh, a week. Tried like 140 different Armagnac casts, and um, it's uh, we have a couple. We have a couple of those hitting. I mean, it's every month is a grind. Um, you know, it's always like, you know, what, what do I release this month? What do I wait to release, you know, figure out like cash flow type thing. Um, and that's, you know, can't have more, you know, I've been kind of rye heavy as of late and I noticed a lot of people, you know, they'll get their bourbons. I mean, but it's not, I don't know when stuff is coming in, you know, like peerless, they took nine, one put one. The rye took eighteen months, and the the uh, the bourbon took twenty months to get in. Like Jesus, oh yeah. People don't realize that side of the thing where it's just not because I want to release it. You know, I'll rise this month because I want to, but it's just the way the barrels fall. Um, but uh, no, I'm I'm really interested to see how uh, the end of the year um, ends, and then the start of twenty twenty four. I think. Uh, we have some good things going and, um, you know, we just keep plugging away. Um, you know, the one thing I'm always, uh, not worried about or anything, it's just like, you know, where, where, what's that happy medium? You know, there is one rule in my group. It's like, you have to be in six releases a year, um, which is unfortunately not, uh, a lot of people, uh, um, are down this year. Caleb, uh, no, that's fine. Well, that's a whole that's a whole group thing for like for me, Caleb. you and Jerry. Caleb, what? Are you, Caleb, who got has Caleb. the Facebook? I got the Facebook. You have the Facebook, but you guys got to say. Are we, we in the group, Jeff? By the way, I'm Caleb, are we yeah. in the group? Uh, Caleb is. You guys, I don't know. Well, I mean, is he in through our podcast? No, no. Through my personal page. Yeah. yeah. So Caleb doesn't actually just tell us anything, you know. Instead of just being like, "Hey guys," I mean, you guys could just DM me on the side and be like, "Yeah, that's I what I did." This. Why would I DM you? I have your fucking phone number. Oh, oh you can do that too. <laughs> Fuck. That's but you I... don't know the releases. Like, no, I don't. Caleb, I don't know the Caleb, schedule. I don't know any Caleb, of that. Caleb shit. knows all that shit. But that's what I did. I told Jeff I wanted that whistle pig, and uh, yeah, we, we made Caleb, it work. Came to your I asked door. Caleb one time, one time, one time, <laughs> to fucking get a bottle that I really wanted. He was like, "Okay." I'm like, "Yeah." It drops at eight o'clock. What box? What bottle? Sorry, it's not a Veracolite. It was just something I really mm. wanted, and I, I don't what really. Bottle? Want, I don't want to get into the details <laughs> of it because it's not like a, it's not like a happy thing. What bottle? It was like a proceeds thing for yeah. a for a fallen firefighter. Oh, and was that the one in Rochester though? No, no, it was local, local. Gotcha. So I really wanted to. I really wanted to get that bottle. Gotcha. And uh, Caleb, fucked up. Caleb didn't get it. Yeah, Dude, it Caleb was, did it not. It sold get out it. in like ten seconds. Yeah, 
But it, I mean, it also didn't help that I yeah. texted you at eight twenty and said, "Hey, man, did you get in for the bottle?" And you're and like, "Oh no, I forgot. Yeah. I you totally forgot tw- about it." You texted me twenty minutes later. Yeah, well, well that's yeah. that's what I get. Yeah, ten. We sec- trusted you, dude. Ten seconds is a lot. You know, the one thing it's kind of funny is um, a lot of the times I get guys that are like, "Oh, dude, your stuff sells out and so quick." I'm like, "Yeah, I had probably like eight or nine releases sell in less than two minutes. Two minutes is a long fucking time if you have a." If you have a, um, you know, like a reminder set, like a minute before, eight fifty nine, all my shit drops at nine. So if you have it like eight fifty nine, two minutes is a long time. Something, in my opinion, you know, you count to one twenty, that might take a week to count to one twenty. <laughs> you know what? I've told every girl I've been with, uh, one hundred twenty seconds is a long time. You try holding a plank that long, see what you can do. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's how he has three girls. Well, yeah, two are mine. Yeah. Two are mine. But yeah, 120 seconds, long time, guys. Try to hold the plank for two minutes. See who's see who's hurting there. But no, it's um, it's been a great year. Um, super appreciative of everybody in my group, even those that haven't been in the group or in a pick. But it's been a, uh, you know, who would have thought I've done would do this for a living? I would have never thought this in a million years. Dude, you had that thing set. What are you doing? <laughs> Keeps fucking around. We're good. I mm-hmm. I like it like this. This mm-hmm. shit was crazy. And then you got your uh, auto. Just in. so you guys know, while we were on the show, I ordered a new one on Amazon. So there's a new <laughs> one coming already. <laughs> so even before this episode ends, there's a new arm coming on the way. It's That's already cool. on the way. And you got your It'll auto be here tomorrow. And you got your auto in, so some yeah. people can auto in and just like they don't have to wait, yeah, right? I um. Is that how that works? I assume. Uh, yeah, it's a touchy subject, but like a lot of people don't like it. Um, it's one way to move those bottles that, you know, I don't do it right away. You know, if a bottle sits on the shelf at our store for, you know, over two months, then I'll start doing it. Um, because if everybody, I've had a formula, um, that I have, um, and effort, everybody would be in six picks a year. We wouldn't have to do it in my opinion. Last year, I think 88% of the people were in six picks. This year, we're going to go down to like 68 to 70. Yeesh. I think. All right. So, we got to step up our game for uh, Caleb and down to her podcast. No, but, it's it's fine. But like, well, we'll be in not, two and then we'll get in, we'll get four more before the year ends. Yeah, it's, it, it is what it is. It's like, but you, we have, you know, wines that are somewhere $10, you know, wines that are pretty good bottles, but like, if you're chasing certain bottles, this is not the group for you. Like if you're chasing Old Forester, Bur- or uh, not Birthday Burn, but <laughs> Old Forester Barrel Proof or like Rare Character, or whatever. If you're chasing certain bottles, this is not why I started the group. I think everything that uh, we do, um, we don't put 150 uh, barrels out a year like some of the uh, group I know does. Are they declining barrels? Are they looking at price? Do they care? I care about every. I care about all that stuff. I care about quality. Uh, when I first started, it was cool because oh, look at that sticker, look at the wax color, blah blah blah. Doesn't matter what's inside the the bottle as long as it look the bottle look fucking cool. No, I've always from day one. I've always been about quality. It was I got caught up in the like let's decorate the bottle type thing. But man, like I've said the past couple of years. I could give two shits about what that sticker is. Um, I have zero in, uh, I can't say zero. There's certain uh, months where I'll be like, oh, this would be a cool idea to do this bottle. This month, I don't even think I told them any ideas. I was like, this is what I have. These are the dimensions. Do your work, dude. Thank you. And I got them back and and I was like, okay, works for me. And I sent them to you. God, I was like, those are huge titties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, well, why do I, I don't really care about that? Like, I care about one thing. There's one thing I care, or two things I care about is the quality in the bottle, and I want to be transparent on that label with uh, the yield, because I want to tell everybody that they got you know one bottle of 150 bottles of this single barrel that will never be replicated ever again because it is a single barrel. Um, you know the groups that you know that's one thing I wish groups would do more often. Um, is the fact that, um, you know, say the yield, tell them the yield. They want to know information. Um, I get distributors, um, they're probably frustrated with me because I always ask, 
every time, I mean, I still have to ask, even if I've done 40 picks with the person, I still ask barrel date and bottle date. Because I want to know what actually is the juice, right? Even though it might say four year on the bot out of the label, it might be seven year. But like, I want to be transparent as possible with my group that I can possibly be, um, because you should have the you should know that this is a seven year. This is this is has one hundred and fifty bottles or whatever. Like that information um, means a lot and goes a long ways. And you know, it was kind of funny is. I had a couple of people about two months ago. I was like, hey, do you know anything about this pick? And different groups. I was like, no. Well, they don't have the information you post. Well, it's one question to these people, and I ask it every time. I mean, that's why we do the stickers, just to have that secondary information on there. It's not because of the image or anything. That's cool. But, like, the other stuff really doesn't matter. Or that the picture doesn't matter, but the other stuff matters to me. So it's really funny you you talk about like going to the distributors and you asking all these questions. Uh, I I found it really funny that when we were at Penelope, when you started asking questions, the guy was almost kind of like, oh uh, well, uh, you, you know, it was almost like he was intimidated by you. It was kind of it was kind of funny. Um, do you get that a lot when you go to these uh, you know distilleries no, that, and do that, these picks? No, with that guy, you could tell he was not. Um... He was not the he was not the, the barrel man. guy. He was not him. Really nice guy. Not, he wasn't him, uh, like Caleb said. And you know when you ask like when you he's like all right guy I think when we first sat down all right you're gonna have an architect no <laughs> no sir um, we don't want to know any information about any of these barrels we just want to drink them and see what we think and we're gonna choose the best one we might not choose one but um, because we're here just because of quality and not because you know, Penelope of the name will sell um, because you've, you've, you've built a good marketing and a good product for, you know, might not be for everybody, but like the name sells. And that's not why we're here. We're here to uh, put our names behind this pick and it, and hopefully we pick a good one. And when I, when I first said, we don't want to know proofs or he was kind of like cut off guard. It's like, why not? Well, we're not picking because it's a, seven year eight year whatever the years were proof like i don't want that like you know i had one guy in <clears throat> in my group today we need more hazmat picks well i don't pick because of proof i pick because of quality so if it's hazmat it has me if it I, isn't, I gotta it be isn't. honest with you why would you i i understand there's a market for it and guys like that 150 proof that crazy fucking shit but why well like you don't need it to be 150 proof to make it good well, I'm, you can pick a ninety-eight proof fucking whiskey, and I mean, obviously, Penelope. That's why, that's why everything. And, 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 and I mean, it's just so, some of it's really good. That's why everything blind is there. So if you came, if you ask, if you guys ask me, hey, can you uh, pour me a sample of X? You know, I'm probably gonna give you two more samples, and you're gonna get numbers one, two, three, and you're gonna be like, you tell me which one you like, and you, and a lot of people that come to my place or. I give samples to they don't like that because they want to know they want to taste what they ask for and i kind of work differently i want to know what you like out of the three they're going to be very similar like weeded bourbons I'll, I'll do the same mash bills but you tell me what you like out of these three just because it's a weller product or a willet or a whatever it is doesn't mean the label is phenomenal like weller 12 everybody goes buck wild over that thing do you think that there are, obviously, you run a group, uh, no names specifically or anything, but do you think there's a lot of, like, really snobby guys when it comes to barrel picks? And, you know, like, they're really judgmental on, 100%. you know, specific barrels or this isn't a high enough proof, yeah. you know, like, a lot of shit talk, almost. Yeah, a lot of guys go in with, I want to know the proof. Is it the highest proof you ever distilled or highest proof you ever uh, did a single barrel for? Like, I don't yeah there's there's a lot of that so what is it about like obviously you're in the game man so what is it about proof that everybody's so fucking crazy about like why is it it need to be 120 plus proof for it to be a good it's man whiskey? it's manly no i you gotta get i, that I like juice. i like high proof um you know i like i like feeling that uh the heat a little bit uh you know depending on you know if it's well balanced 
a lot of people use the word smooth, which I can't stand. I like the word. I like words well balanced. Um, if it's well balanced, um, if it's well balanced at 94 or 144, that's all I'm looking for. But you know, a lot of that lower stuff. So if you, th so, um, I want to say about a year ago, I did a, I put up a poll. Do you drink, how do you drink your whiskey or drink your, you know, whatever. Yeah. Drink your whiskey, bourbon, whatever. Um, with ice cube with neat or a dash of water. And I want to say like 60% of my group said ice cube. So if you think about it, if you pour a 90 proofer with fridge ice, which most people use fridge ice, mm -hmm. no offense, it looks gay, but it's okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> go out and get a fucking mold on Amazon. You fucking losers. <laughs> But well, the molds are key, man. They're awesome. Yeah, you have a fancy cube, man. Fuck it. If you're fucking pouring a seventy plus dollar bottle of fucking bourbon, reach into your fucking pocket and go buy a twelve dollar mold off Amazon. Bro, but no, like 12, if you if like... you if you wait where I was getting to, if you wait twenty minutes, that thing went from like ninety proof to like sixty proof. Yeah. yeah. So yuck. What can you what can you taste there? Water. Bing. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Oh, uh -huh. no. Nope. Uh, oh, is this uh, alcoholic Aquafina? But like, that's, you know, that's another thing is like, you drink the 120s, right? You put an ice cube in it. You wait 30 minutes. Now you're down to like 100 proof. So you're drinking. Now you can kind of, you can still taste the bourbon. And, um, but I don't know. I, I, I like, I've noticed myself liking more. Uh, I think the higher proof brings out a lot of more, more flavors rather than, uh, when they filter it down to or uh, cut it down to uh, you like ninety proof, where a lot of water takes over a lot of the flavors, in my opinion. But if you bring if you brought armagnac in the world, right, you don't really have much high proof armagnac. You cut that down, you can the the flavor that really express themselves even more at like forty eight percent. But I, I'm a, I'm a high proof whore. Speaking of uh, pores, what's next? I'm um, I'm ready for uh, pour number yeah. two. Yeah, I'm ready. Whatever you choose, uh, yeah, this let's, is whatever. Uh, let's do this one. We're gonna call this Take Tuesday. What do we What do we got here, uh, dude? What is this, we a, Jeff? We have a six year. Would you say Take Tuesday? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. because you know, there's it's his second time on the show. Yeah, it's his it's his third time on the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a six year Willet, 120.6 proof. All right, awesome. Oh my God, does that one have the purple top? <laughs> Oh my god! It does. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, man. Did you leave this the price sticker on the bottom of the bottle on purpose? No, that's a, what do you mean? Where? Oh, there is a sticker on the bottom. I didn't even notice. <laughs> oh, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> he started pouring it. I looked at it. I, I was like, "Sheesh!" That's not what I paid for it, but <laughs> damn. Thank you. I have. That's been in my. That's that's an old one. But. All right. So, uh, Jeff, you said something earlier about being in a group that does the bourbon picks like that, and you said you wanted to tell people, like, the yield, yep. you know, be honest with the sticker and the label. And I, you know, working in the retail thing side of things, I always find it, like, when you're telling people, when they're just looking at the shelf what to pick and what to buy, it's like, well, if you see anything single barrel, you're getting something that's rare, Yeah, it's a bit special, it's, and especially when they put... It's a one-time thing. Exactly. Uh, that Once that bottle and that barrel's gone, Adios. that's it, never be recreated, so... When you stir people in that direction, it's like, especially being in part of a group, you're getting something rare, it's special, it's something sought after, and if you're part of a group, it makes it even close-knit, you got that bond in your group right there. Yeah, it's, um, even, I've had barrels that were sitting next to each other that tasted totally different, you know, distilled on the same day, filled on the same day, um, and, you know, the wood, you know, even sitting in the same rick and literally right next to each other tasting different and that's why single barrels are so cool and you know when i do take a group to pick because it's just not me um when i there's like nothing left should i just finish it yeah of course um that'd be 20 dollars um <laughs> i believe it that's why I f yo listen mm. that's, that's why that I asked. no you're fine <laughs> um doomed drink drink all these um but um <laughs> i forgot what i was gonna say but uh that's why i uh you know, when I go into a pick experience, it's all about uh, 
kind of being, you know, finding those nuances that are different than kind of the on the shelf product, you know, like, well, this hits differently. This is tastes super unique. Never had anything from this distillery that tastes like this. Like those are the things I like to hear from people that are coming to a pick and trying that stuff. Yeah, I mean, just this the whole is experience. so good, dude. What this this pick the it, or this this willet is delicious. Is that the six or five? That's the six. six. So where six I was earlier, awesome. where, where I was earlier tonight, um, we'll we'll try the five year last. Um, they like the five year over the six year. We did. We had a good five year, like uh, for our one year anniversary special. Uh, yeah, that was actually not. Oh, a I thought this was your first episode. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a fucking dick. You would. Nope. You would think it was our first nope. episode. But... So just to give a little rundown, we did a 40 minute show previous to this 40 minute show, which we are now at, <laughs> and uh, only 10 minutes of it recorded because the fucking soundboard fucked up. If you have been listening to the show for over a year, which some of you have, uh, this happened uh, another time where we did episode 17 episodes and I just didn't delete the fucking card so it just stops fucking recording after 10 minutes that's the end of my rant so no it's not our first show it's and, just a, a and mistake between, and, and between the between that time he broke his uh arm boom arm, arm, arm boom and since then I've ordered a new one <laughs> well, that's good hopefully it's, it's here tomorrow it should be I'll show up it'll <laughs> it show, show up by the end of the episode that'd be sick <laughs> wouldn't it I would put that shit together right on the a show. little drone all I can hear is, drone. all I can hear is pounding like all right <laughs> Sir, we're about to hear. They're going to set it up for you too. That'd be cool. Bring them on. For they the should. They more, should. More guests. Actually, they'll be blinded by the light when they first open the doors. First of all, you've never actually came here to just chill. Yeah, I did the second. Oh night. yeah, yeah. Isn't it so much nicer? Like to chill just, to just hang out. Yeah, you got you. You actually have a lot more shit going on than the first time I was here. Well, I mean. Like I feel like being it is I feel like it's I'm, our first episode. I feel like I'm at a influencer's <laughs> dream like setup with fucking these circle lights and it's like Who is your favorite influencer? I know I asked, but you never well, said. said. Yeah, I did. No, no you did. And, and, yes, you did. And yeah. episode, yes, you did. Episode, episode, oh yes, episode. you know why I don't remember? Because my fucking arm boom fucking broke. This <laughs> is bullshit. One, no, episode one, uh, point one, five. one point one tonight. Um <laughs> this is one point two. Um we uh my boy uh, Steve Berman uh, runs uh, Berman's Bourbon, B E R M. Berman, whatever. For the second Bur- shout Berman. out tonight, Bur- yeah, it's two more. This than dude, I- all it's, the two sh- mo- it's two more than I ever give him. In I life, was gonna but- say this dude <laughs> loves shouting people out, dude. But no, uh, he's my boy. Uh, he came uh, on one of his picks that was uh, his anniversary pick, the Castle and Key I released, and um, he's a good dude. Uh, I always give him shit because I actually got the, so I told, so one thing he wanted is his date on the sticker of like being a rem- memorable bottle. I totally fucked up the date that we picked the bottle. So I had to resend him stickers. And of course I put influencer and in with his address, but no, he, I give him shit. And that's one thing um, that I talk to a lot of my friends about is it's okay to like, if you get free bottles, I'm jealous because I don't have people sending me free stuff. Um, I taste a lot of whiskey for barrel picks, but I don't have, it's probably a good thing. I don't have all these free bottles because I don't know where I'd do with them. Um, not everything is great. Stop saying it. Um, it's cool to say, it's okay to say these guys have potential. These guys, that's why I love, uh, you know, uh, dad's drinking bourbon. Um, they're close to me. They do honest reviews. They get a lot of free samples, not free bottles, uh, free samples. And they're super honest about it. Like these guys have potential. These guys completely suck. Um, you know, that's their opinion, um, which is only one opinion. But, you know, that was the one thing going into Penelope is, you know, when when a special release hit, you could see that 50 people got a free bottle or whatever it was because they all posted how great that special release was on the same date. It was like, uh, yeah. it's like Christmas. See, that's one thing I like. So it's Which obviously is fine, but send me a bottle in there for free. Yeah. Right. So it's very similar, obviously in the cigar industry. Like we literally went to a trade show and got well, hundreds of free cigars. Apparently you got three tonight for this particular one. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> I, I give this guy a cigar that probably costs like fucking double with this. It's a fucking four kicks cap. I give him. Hey, it's not all about price. 
It's about it's, actually, qu- it's about quality. Yeah, it's quality. I'm gonna quality. just throw this out there. That cigar is no, I'm top just, I'm notch just, quality. I'm just giving shit. This I good. know. Well, yeah, I'm just saying. Like, Listen, uh, I have should... nothing great, nothing but great things to say about uh, Crown Heads. I mean, it's oh, a this fantastic is, this is good. product. Yeah, it's my. It's, it's Listen, good. he smoked more of it than the last cigar we gave him. No, I smoked the whole thing, but the only the last one was like two inches. This one was like <laughs> six. Six, Are see, you what sure? six, see, what, <laughs> see what six inches looks like, fellas. That's what you know. That's what it looks like. But uh, <laughs> camera anyway, camera adds an inch or two. You know? Like that's how it is. Like <laughs> when we review cigars, like I, I'm firm in believing that like if you don't like something, don't say you like it. Like I've said it. Literally, we had Geo has the most controversial reviews ever like at our show like if i don't like it i don't like it i, I know i know and it, it's weird because like we'll have guests on the show and then like geo will be like yeah it was an all right cigar <laughs> i'm just like oh my god dude but listen i'm gonna hate us i told matt booth to his face that one of his cigars that i smoked you know listen i didn't like it and this guy is like one of the most respected blenders you know for cigars in the industry and then he you know drew a giant dick on his hand and then said that was you <laughs> yeah but i've also since smoked multiple different cigars he's done and actually been a fan so like you cannot like one particular product like it's no i hear you you just have to be honest about that and people respect you for it yeah i mean that's what i think and i think uh influencers in this community are scared to say they don't like something because they're gonna piss off the person that they got their bottle from and it's actually going to help it. Everybody. Well, I was going to say, I mean, if everybody says everything's great, everything's great. If uh, you, you need actual critics out there to say, hey, listen, uh, this is what I thought about it. Wasn't really what I was looking for. Uh, yeah. Maybe it was too hot. Maybe, you know, it had a nasty little aftertaste, uh, you know, like whatever it may be. You, you know, you need those critics. Otherwise, you're going to just keep putting out the same shit because yeah. everyone's like, oh, my God, I fucking love this. Yeah, we know. We know. Our three pals were pretty similar at the pick. Yeah, say. yeah. And, then, and guy, then some guys. This fucking milf lover over here, he was. The, hunt, we, the hunter. To be fair, though. He's just like, yeah. I want to just get drunk enough where every milf looks great. I was <laughs> drinking a lot. He was day. like, number awesome. one, please. <laughs> to be number fair, one. though, Jeff, do we not all love milfs? Oh, of course. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. You were a little mumbled. Yeah, of course. <laughs> actually, actually, <laughs> actually, nope. <laughs> what? I had to say what the shirt said. Why do nope. you like you like dilfs? <laughs> <laughs> it does say yes. It says yes. Uh, yep on the back though. So it says yep. Yep. So, yep. Uh, uh, nope. 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 Tonight. Caleb actually really liked that Marsala cask. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Thanks. That was never again. Never again. That was actually my favorite part, though, about when we did our first pick, though. Like you said, the blind thing. Yeah, I know we're bringing, you know, we're circling back to that. It's the reason we were able to know, like, yeah, I don't really like this one, and I was, this just had a really weird aftertaste. Yeah, he. I mean, and, one one thing you you have to know is, uh, it's always nice going to the place. Unfortunately, uh, usually, if you said like, if you said nope, like we did the first two times, usually they'll like. Like the first two barrels were hundred percent nope, um, <laughs> and three was really good. But like once you, a lot of people, like they'll have like a fifth ready for you, like in the back. Like oh, let me go see what else I have. Like that's why you go travel to places because there's usually a a fifth, a sixth, a seventh. Like they want you leaving. Like you just picked. You're. I mean, it's an it's a pretty decent investment that you're putting into these barrels. Some of them. Um, and uh, they want you to walk out like, yeah, we're fucking proud of this one. Like this is, this this is gonna speak, you know, wonders to our crowd that we're. And we didn't really get that vibe with Penelope, but um, hopefully next time if we decide to go down there, you know, it'll be a little different. It'll be interesting to see how MGP and. Help that, them invest in that, you know, that, that how, industrial that. building. <laughs> or a couple more cups for a tasting. So we're going down to uh, K- Kentucky for his birthday. Yeah. In you October. Should, you should be going the 12th. No, we're going the 27th. My parents should have waited a so, couple, a couple so, more um, weeks before they consummated. Where are you guys going? So uh, my wife did the whole itinerary. Oh, you're, you're making a face, dude, but I'm telling you, there's no one more organized than my wife. So we're gonna go to. Does she more? She know 
place is it going to? Where are you guys she, staying? Are you guys staying in Louisville? Oh, okay, ready? Are you staying? I in told her where I wanted to go. I'm going to tell you and one. She place. made it work. She I'm, made it work. I'm going to tell you one place. I'm going to tell you one place that you have to get on the st- schedule, and I'll make it happen. Is Starlight? Starlight. So it's in 20 minutes from Louisville. It's in Indiana, and it'll be your best experience you you will have when you go down there. So, all right, let's do it. I know that we have Will it? I know that ha- we have, have to go have to go there for lunch. Okay, that's my wife. My wife. She was like, I looked at places that have great Heaven Hill. Yeah, it's right next door. Yep. So, my wife, she's on top of shit, man. But like, you think, and the thing, if you've never been before, like, we're going to Michter's. We're gonna do the bottling. Oh, if they have that open, uh, did you, my wife already okay. got it? Oh, cool. She already confirmed. Nice. It. So, so if, if you can do, yep, like two, like you can do all like Louisville. You can have that whole like. So Angels that was MV, that's like night that, one. That's, that, that's cool. night one. We're gonna just we're gonna try and hit as many of those as we possibly can, and then Saturday we're gonna go out to Bardstown. Yeah, we're gonna go to Willet, yeah. and we're gonna go to uh, uh, Heaven Hill. Yeah, you can and hit then, up. You could hit up. Um, you know, you got Barton right there too. It's really quick. You'll drive by it. Um, but no, it's uh, people think they can get like five and six distilleries in one day. You can't. It's we tough. actually tried to do that. We went last summer. Uh, we did, I think, Old Forester, Peerless, Angels Envy, and Mictors in one night. That was four. You're right. You, you say that again. You can't. You, you do, did what? You did what? It was Mictors, Angels Envy, Peerless. Yeah, but they're all right Forester. there. Yeah, I get they're, it. They're right. There. I'm saying, but like, you're absolutely right. But you if cannot you, do more than that. It's just it that you, takes so but long. But like, you can do all four of those because they're. Literally thirty seconds sure. from each other. And then now, now if taking consideration Bardstown, the shuttling, four roses the and... shuttling. Now that's what we did the second day. We went to four Ro- four roses, Wild Turkey, Woodford Reserve, Buffalo Trace, and Castle and Key. We did five that day. It was pretty. That was a good day. <laughs> There's no way you toured every. You toured all. No, we didn't them. tour yeah. them. We, we visited. Got, yeah, 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 we yeah. visited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was a lot of fun though. Like once you see one distillery tour, you kind of you yeah. I mean, we got the Penelope tour. You mean to tell me that's going to really knock down fucking... Not that I'm shitting <laughs> the on... The Penelope one. tour. <laughs> like, listen. What'd you think of the Pen- the Penelope tour, Jeff? <laughs> hey, we saw that, that creek where they get their water from, and there was a pair of dirty underwear in it. <laughs> Guys, they also have, like, legitimately a state-of-the-art filtering thing. I can't shit on them for, like, their actual production means. It's like 30 grand. But... The actual It's facility. not made there. It's MGP. We know that. I'm talking about the water filtration. This yeah, it was funny, though. Yeah. It was just, it was funny. But, like, it's an industrial park in the middle of fucking Jersey. It's ugly. The whole fucking <laughs> city is ugly. It was interesting. The whole state. We went the Jersey night before. Sucks. We were like, we're going to have a fucking night. We did a whole episode. It's called The Guy's GTL. <laughs> We did a whole episode about it. We just talked shit about New Jersey for fucking... Yeah, we went to the number three sports bar in New Jersey. Whatever the fuck it is, remember, because I don't remember the name. I can't remember San Asario or something like that? No. Mm -hmm. But it was legitimately, like, top five, like, most whitish trash place I've ever seen in my life. There was, like, a group of kids playing Dungeons and Dragons in the corner or some shit. We bought a we bought a twelve pack of beer out of the cooler that was cheaper than a round of three beers. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. But that being said, we're going down there. Why don't you try and make it work? Or are you out of town that weekend? October is terrible for me. Like terrible. Um El Terrible. Busy guy. When is it? When is it? The twenty seventh, twenty eighth, and we're leaving yeah, the twenty ninth. Okay. I'll be in I'll be in Vermont for a pick. Oh, whistle pig up there? Nope. No. Oh. Bacta. Bacta. Cancel it, dude. No. <laughs> Reschedule it. Let's go. Let's do a barrel pick in Kentucky. It'd be awesome. Oh. It's his birthday. Yeah. Fuck. You only turned 32. Yeah, you only turned 32 what? once. You know how long ago was that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember my 39th birthday. <laughs> that was February. <laughs> What's your birthday? February 13th. Oh, I'm the 10th, dude. That's unfortunate. Well, you guys have birthday bros. Yeah, you're yeah. a Valentine's Day baby. Yeah. So am I, dude. That's yeah. awesome. Uh-huh. We always miss the Super Bowl, though. I want it to well, fall on Buffalo. my birthday. That's Buffalo. No, I mean, like, it, it, I want it to <laughs> fall. I want I the Pat's Super Bowl guy, to be so. my birthday. Oh, let's, let's bring up. Uh, what do you think uh, What do you think your team's going to do this year? Is my team not your team? No, it's not. 
Who the fuck do you like? Where am I from? Rochester. No, I'm not. I've been here for six years. Oh, dude, Duke yo. Fan. No, I fucking... No, he told I told us. you on the first episode. See how much yeah, you I know, dude. research. Well, yeah. this is the first episode. This yeah. is our no, first this episode is, of This is 1.2 tonight, so it's like our third. <laughs> dude, aren't you but, from... Are you from California? <laughs> no. I like, have no fucking clue. South, I forgot. South Carolina. Detroit Lions. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right, dude. You know what, dude? I got to say, Dan Campbell's doing a great job with them. But they did just lose Jamal Charles and... Yeah, they got a... Yeah. Jameson yeah. Williams. They got a yeah. sick new running back, though. What? Jameson Williams is the one that's suspended, I thought. No, but Dude, they, we, they uh, lost Swift and Jamal Williams. That's fine. Yeah. Swift was always hurt, but um, he was always hurt. Yeah, he was. He was. It's a fact. He's with the Eagles. Super talented. He's with the but, Eagles now. But um, Jameer Gibbs. You know when um, you know we like. I got apparently our guys like to gamble, <laughs> so uh, we lost a few to that. Um, but like I'm not heavily invested. It's disgusting in that. gambling. NFL. It's disgusting. I'm not heavily invested in the NFL. Uh, like a lot of people are, I'm more college type guy. You know, college basketball, college football. Duke basketball, I remember. Yeah, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, Dan Campbell, you know, I thought I, I've, I've gained a lot of respect for him. I thought he was just going to come in and be the, one of those motivational speakers and be like, yeah, well, I know, you know, but he's actually changed the, the I mean, culture. Yeah, the culture. It's funny because, like, we watched him on Hard Knocks last year and I was watching the first episode. This guy's awesome. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I was like, uh, see, maybe you thought that, Gio, but I was like, this guy's speeches are like kind of, they're like sort of really generic, man. Like he's like, you guys can do anything. Put your head, put your heads together, come together as a team. I'm like, I think Detroit's eh. starting to believe in him, and um, it'll be interesting to see what. You know, I'm never, never. Uh, it's a fucking jacked old. When man. there's two minutes to go in a game, and there's that uh, we're up six, uh, we're losing. 90% of the times. Um, you know, it was kind I of, saw it. it you guys kind of, were up against the Bills. and You know, it's kind of funny. The last, like, five years of watching the Lions, you know, one of the Bills fans, uh, you know, he in my group, he um, he always tweets, or uh, sorry, he always Axis. posts. Posts. And it's like, oh, there's no one that's had heartfelt, like, losses like the Bills. I was like. Look at the Lions' losses in the fourth quarter with two minutes ago. The last five years, I could. There's 25 games they've lost. Did tell you me, think that me, the Lions were going to beat the Bills last year? The beat. Thanks. Was it Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. No. Thank, no. no. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was. Yeah, it was Thanksgiving. Trust the Diggs me. caught the pass with like, Josh Allen threw an absolute dot between three defenders. To, Lions to, had him beat. Diggs. Lions had him beat. Hundred percent. Their yeah. defense played amazing. Yeah, but. We did, but Lions normally do. Choke? Give, no, give games away. Choke? Well, it's not choke, 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 it's, choke, it's choke. The choke. It's the, that, to the be fair, though, you guys that's did ruin the greatest <laughs> running back ever and the greatest wide receiver ever his career. Yeah, but with... Gary with, <laughs> <yeah. Harry> Sanders. <laughs> and Megatron. But, like, in my... Like, I was never a Stafford fan. Yeah, he bought his championship, but... I've do you al- like Goff, though? Are you, you okay I've, with I've, Goff? So, I'm, like I said, I'm not an NFL guy. But I've always been a believer. If you had a good offensive line and a mediocre NFL quarterback, which is pretty damn Off. good, <laughs> you should do pretty damn well. Um, but it, if you're gonna rely, and I've always said this about Josh Allen, if he's you're gonna be your rely guy, he's gonna be your number one running back. It's gonna be very tough to win the Super Bowl if you're that's that that guy. Uh, I see now that Hines is gone and Singletary is gone. We have an opportunity with Delvin Cook's brother James. He is going to be. I'm telling you, but they have to. They have to run plays good. for him. He can't just. Well, we also just got Dalton Kincaid. Obviously, this isn't a football show. We're not going to yeah. sit here and talk yeah, about yeah. fucking football for the next 20 minutes. But uh, I'm just saying, you've relied I, I, on I'm one guy for you. a lot. But bold prediction: Bills are going to do worse this year than last year. That's my oh my prediction. god, we might win 12 games instead of 13. Oh my god, no! And your Patriots are still going to finish in fourth place. Yes, they're not even. They're not even. I think this is the year Josh Allen goes down with a major injury. The Don't Jets, you wish that bad juju on us. Ricky Jets Brown? are going to win the division. It's only time. No, in my, they're not. In my, in my opinion, it's only time for it's him. It's the to... it's the Bills division to lose. That old fucking skeleton that plays Dude, quarterback. Miami and Miami and Jets are pretty Jets. solid. I I will say this. I am more fearful of Miami than the Jets. I'm not. They have Tua as the right. quarterback. We're going back to uh, drinking. Yeah. Okay. Right. So <laughs> listen. Uh, fuck the bills. Listen, we talked a lot about we talked a lot about alcohol. We talked a lot about rock elite. We talked 
you know, we we talked about a lot of cool shit. Thoughts on mommy milkers? Yeah. I know Caleb had a couple news stories he wanted to get to. So yeah. why don't we why don't we get into you know wah, wah, wee, wah. the news with Caleb? All right, news with Caleb. And we have Jeff today. Oh, you know what, guys? The hottest news on the press right now is our Penelope Barrel Picks going to be coming out 9-1. So make sure you guys get this bottle. It's going to be hot. You're going to want it. It's got a great picture of Penelope Cruz and, Tostada. Her, ju- and her jugs hanging out. You're going to want to get this. You're going to want to get this. <laughs> Before you go into the news, how has uh, you know, responses been? Have you had a lot of people saying? So we're starting to you know test the waters a little yeah. bit. We got a lot of guys that are like, I'll take two. I'll yeah, take nice. two. I'll yeah. take two. I'll Buy take one. two. I'll You've take got two. four pre-orders so far. For save, yeah. save one. But save, now one, this is one. this is like grind time though. Yeah. So like now that this episode is <sighs> going to drop next Wednesday, the week before it comes out, this that that week is going to be all. Hey, it drops next week. If you don't pre-order it, you don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. All right, news with Caleb. All right, news <laughs> with Caleb. All right, here we go. First up, we have uh, Jack Daniels 2023 uh, going to release a twice barreled special release Heritage Barrel Rye celebrating whiskey making traditions from Jack Daniels. So you're going to have it uh, originally in white oak barrels, and then it's going to be actually crafted into Heritage Barrels. So there are special releases that are going to do complexity of Jack Daniels and their rye whiskey. So it's going to have a deeper, richer, toasted layer to it and uh, flavors of oak and vanilla. So if you're a rye lover and a Jack Daniels lover, you got this to look forward to. It's yeah, coming out. Their their ryes have been pretty solid, and it's probably right around 135 proof cast strength. Is it really? Yeah, 130. It's going to be that hot? Yeah, it'll be that. Jesus. Not that, that, not that hot. It'll be that proof. Okay. It's well, not considered I mean, hot. I mean, right. I think 135 rye, I think hot. Uh, immediately my mind right, goes okay, hot. So I'm not going to like this one. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> part two. Our second news story of the day. We have Bushmills teaming up with golfer Joel Dellum, and they're doing a giveaway at uh, PGA Tour Stop. So if you buy a bottle of Bushmills at the PGA Tour, um, it's not really a giveaway. They're giving you $10 off when you buy the bottle in a rebate coupon form. But it's a team up with uh, Joel D- Dalham? Do you know Damon. who he is? Damon. I don't even he's know who a, he He's is. a fucking... Uh, he's a goofball, It dude. goes by Damon. 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 He's, he's, a, he's, he's a goofball. He's the bucket hat lover. He's like the partier, but the... But I like Joel Dahlman. <laughs> <laughs> I like... It. Yeah, I'm not good with the last names, but um, you know what? He's the new sponsor, giving away drinks at the PGA Tour, so... Thank you. See what happens to her Bushmills, what they got in store. If you're a fan of, of the Bush. The Bush... <laughs> <laughs> See, that's going back to the 70s and 80s for all our Caleb older listeners. Caleb loves the bush. No, not you a fan guys said this five years? For our older generation listeners, we're back in time now. Yeah, you're going to enjoy that bush. Baby. Have you uh, had this five-year yet? Not that one. Mm-mm. Not that one. Mm. No. Pass that it'll, be, it'll be coming around, I'm sure. Kalabe. Oh. All right. Kalib. And, and our third story, we got a cigar news story. So who's going to talk about this? Uh, we got Fosforo Cigars. Uh, new wrapper, new blend, two new sizes. What do we got going on, Jerry Geo? Who's doing this one? I'll do this one. So, uh, we Fosforo is dropping two new sizes in the uh, Connecticut line. This was a uh, release done back in April. Uh, now they're dropping two new sizes. It's going to be a regular production. It's uh, now going to be available in a Robusto and a Toro. So, anybody out there looking for those Fosforo cigars, uh, they're going to be coming, man. Regular production, Connecticut's. Uh, Obviously, Jeff's putting out some bangers out of Nicaragua, so just make sure you're fucking hitting those fucking cigars up, man, because they are fire, and the price point is amazing on these, uh, all sub $10, so if you're looking for something great, check them out. That's dropping. It's going to be it's gonna be coming soon. That's what I got. That's what I got. That's what I got for the story. We're keeping it light today. Phosphorus fucking... Phosphorus is putting out some bangers. I know I gave you guys the Limitada, so what did you guys think of those? Dude, it was awesome. I enjoyed it on the front porch uh, like a week or two ago. It was amazing, man. Gio, I know you enjoyed yours uh, when we smoked it the other day when you yeah. know we were hanging out. You know, I was not smoking at work because I would never do that. That's just inappropriate and not allowed. Exactly. But, you know, if I were <laughs> smoking it at work... I just wish it wasn't so goddamn busy where I had to keep putting it out and fucking going back to it because I was really enjoying it. Uh, mm-hmm. Shout out to Jeff because, you know, 
we met him at PCA. Damn right. And, Shout out to the Jeff. Yes, you know, Cigar Jeff, you know. Mm. He uh, made it work here. And, you know, in that whole Roma, Pestania, Phosphoro family. Did I forget anyone? Oh, Fable. Yeah. Did I, did I cover the Roma fucking sub brands there? You got them. Yeah. Papish Inc. Yeah. 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 Now, this one I'm excited for. So, uh, good old Skip Martin of Roma Craft, where he's obviously going into some Roma news here. So, back in 2016, they released a uh, cigar called the Timeline Crow Magnon. They're re releasing this blend, but uh, in a new size for their fifth anniversary. I think this will be a nice little limited cigar. I mean, Roma's been hitting crazy lately. And for those of you guys who love the stronger cigars, you know it's going to hit. Like, Skip puts out some crazy, crazy stuff. I mean, I smoked his uh, Quinquagenero, you know, the 50th anniversary that he gave us at PCA, and that thing was a treat and a half. Jared, did you smoke yours yet? I've been asking you now. No, I have not. Oh, I'm dude, saving you, it. You're I think we it. should do it on the show. Uh, I didn't get one, so. Yeah, well, you... maybe you should come to PCA. Yeah, <laughs> come to PCA, bitch. <laughs> Size matters. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it's all about the motion. That that's a if contrary size to matter, belief, it's Caleb is that a pro tip? Three kids. It's, a pro, it's a pro tip. It's all about the motion, uh, motion, mood, and you know that's about it. Motion. You gotta have the right mood, right motion, but not time. Good, good ambience. Oh yeah. Well, like I said, 120 seconds is a long time. Trust me, been there. <laughs> How many pumps do you think you got in you? <laughs> over seven. If you get less than seven, it doesn't count as seven sex. You gotta have over seven pumps. That's another pro tip. Under seven pumps is not sex. Nope. I don't know if that's a tip. I think that's a rule. It's a rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't have sex. What do you call it? What would you call that? Dry humping with pre cum. <laughs> <laughs> takes you back to those uh, like junior high school days. We've all been there, right? That, that's called I played the game and won. <laughs> that, was, that was like four years ago for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only had sex twice. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, oh, fuck, dude. Dude, we doing a uh, patrol gone wild. I had a little clip. Oh, you did have yeah, a clip, didn't you? Uh, yeah. We slacked. We didn't do one. So you guys, are, you guys have a job where you can come up with stories. And you guys, oh, I mean, I'm sure we did anything crazy. Could, I mean, Jeez. we did. We had a, actually a really fucking crazy week, dude. It was the dog days of summer. Things weren't popping off and going crazy. <laughs> no, they were. That's the fucked up thing. We had an uh, actual crazy fucked up I weekend. Mean, <laughs> that's what happens during the dog days of summer. The dogs are out. They're barking. Things go wild. Shut the fuck up and just do the patrol going wild. <laughs> All right. Do your patrol going wild, bro. Blocka, blocka. Blocka, blocka. Patrol gone wild. We're doing it big. All right. We have a little clip for you. We'll just roll it, and I think it's really funny. You're not going to give us any headline, no no backstory. You're just playing a clip. Just play the clip, yep. Doing right. it raw. Okay, we're doing okay. it raw. Man caught spiking his female dates drinks with Viagra to make sure they don't get boners because you never know anymore these days. <laughs> I wanted to see if she would get owner. Man. <laughs> so this man was in 2025. <laughs> Dude, you you never know nowadays. You got to be careful. This guy, you know what? The only reason this guy got in trouble and he got caught doing this, he definitely slept with someone who had a boner before. He fell for it once. He was trying to prevent himself from falling for it again. And so this dude started. So. Gone are the roofie days. This dude just wants to make sure he's sleeping with a woman, so he's spiking drinks with Viagra to make sure they don't get boners. And if they get a boner, you know you're you're fucking around with a dude. I mean, the alternative is way worse. You bring them home, and then you find out, and then you find out they have a dick. So I mean, at least get a handful of Franken beans, <sighs> dude. I got a question though. Does like if you dissolve a Viagra tablet, does it actually work once you drink it? Because sometimes chemical properties. I'm no scientist. I do have a chemistry de- degree and a bio degree, but I have no idea if you break apart. Viagra, I have if to it'll say, work. I would assume it would work. You think? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Jeff, what's your take on this? Hot take. <laughs> <laughs> this. Uh, You're on the spot, bro. This 1.2 podcast went uh, to an area. I, uh, wasn't expecting. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great answer. Right. Um, 
So, so yeah, I, the only comparable that I could think of with this is there was a news story that went out with uh, some college football player who uh, went home with what oh. he thought was a uh, biological female. Um, f- fortunately, this is the dude that beat the shit out of yep. the the dude, right? Killed her. Yeah. <laughs> beat her to death. Yeah, the college football star too. Yeah. This was after he got a blowy though, and then found. <laughs> oh my god, mm. dude! But I guess they, you know, afterwards he found out and was like, "Yo, get the fuck out of my house," and they wouldn't leave. So like. He actually got off of murder because he beat her to death and, like, they refused to leave his home. So he played, like, a, you know, unwelcome guest kind of thing? I I guess. That's a a weird Took a dark turn. Like, first Mm -hmm. off, I don't ever want to be in that situation. Like, but, yee. You know, I guess that prevents you from having to go to that level. Well, that's why I just only drink here with you guys and smoke cigars. Can... Can we talk about the dog days? <laughs> I guess we're going back to the dog days. <laughs> Can we talk about the dog did you guys, days? Did you guys have a dog of a day out there? I mean, I'm going to be honest. The funniest thing that happened throughout all this is, like, you know, there was a chase involving an individual with a firearm. And, like, when he's running, obviously, he's a very fat and slow guy. And it was just, like, in my head, like, obviously, like, you know, part of my name was, like, ah, this guy's terribly slow. Like, He's, I think I screamed at him. I was like, dude, you're slow. We are definitely going to catch you, bro. Just give up. Just give up. Like, Is this today? This no. Was, no. Oh. Earlier this week. And like this dude, it, he went to cut through like a parking lot. And they must have just removed a tree. Because there's a big fucking, I'm talking like a three by four, maybe four by four size tree stump. Like you can't miss this shit. A homie tosses the firearm and... Does not see the tree stump, and he fell hard. And part of me is like, "Oh, okay, be intense," but the other part of me is like, ah, "It's funny because you're fat." <laughs> but uh, homie took a tumble, dude. Oh, it was like, it was very, very hard fall. Because were you guys chasing this guy on foot or foot, foot chase? Like it was pretty awesome. I, like our light jog is like this dude running for his freedom. So like, it was just really, really funny. like I never at any point thought this guy was getting. So away. are you guys in the same car? Yes. You too? Yeah. Oh, we're, we've been partners for the last four years. Yeah, we know. Yeah. It's all um, <laughs> we know. Hey, not lesbian partners, but yeah. Dills. Um, we're but, partners, but, um, was there any, it was just you two or is there anybody else on the scene? Oh uh, yeah. There were other officers on the scene. It was just very, very funny. Cause again, like, I'm not the fastest guy, but I know when I'm out running somebody. That's yeah. Just, aside from one instance where I, I mean, how how me. how uh you know when it, I mean you know talk a little bit about your guys is like so this guy's carrying a firearm like um I'm gonna, just, going, I'm gonna throw it out there, Gio. I'm just gonna touch on this. I actually thought this guy was gonna start licking rounds off at us. I swear to God, I thought he was licking rounds off. All right, I have a. Did very, he have any ammo in the gun? Oh yeah, it was a loaded firearm. Um, <laughs> I'm one of those people that say some really outlandish shit if I'm chasing you, and like it's I I, I don't want to repeat it. Yeah, no, but, have to. but uh, I'll tell you it off air. But usually, like after that, it kind of just is like, oh shit, like it, it usually gets the people enough there. But I did, like I said, like I clearly saw him pull it out. I'm like, oh shit, it's gonna happen. And then he threw Dude, it real quick. He, I didn't see him throw it, but I saw him pull it out, and I was like, fuck, like, dude, it's it's a shitty, it's shitty, man. It really is shitty. But at least you guys didn't just he he fell on his own, and you got him, and you didn't have to do anything about it, which is I don't know, like, dude, we're... the job is really fucked up, man. That's why when we talk about like this patrol gone wild shit, with like you know we do it and we talk about funny headlines across the country, but like. Gio and I, I feel like a lot of our audience and listeners, like, they don't realize, like, me and Gio live this shit. Like, we actually live this. And and it's like, sometimes you go to a call and you're like, holy fuck, we could have died. And then sometimes you're like, what the fuck just happened? This is the most fucked up thing I ever saw in my life. And, like, I'm not trying to pretend I'm fucking super cop, because I'm no, not. But, no, like, if Because like, we don't go around bragging about this shit. No, like, this is just for, like, entertainment stories, shooting the shit with the boys. Um, But, like, sometimes you're just like... Oh, okay. All right. This is happening. All right. Well, shit. Um, 
Fuck. All right. What am I doing here? Well, uh, congrats, you guys. Uh, on that day, on that call, you guys were the top dogs of the Dog Days of Summer. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, big dog. <laughs> he told us we were the bit top dogs of the Dog, dog Days of Summer. Deserves what, it. What kind of dog do you think Jerry would be? Well, he's got to be a big dog. He's a big guy. I don't know. Um, with that hair, he might be like a poodle. I was just going to say poodle. <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, poodles are kind of big, dude. You ever seen no. like a, an actual you're, poodle? No, you're like, oh, a, like min- a big furry. You're, you're like a miniature labradoodle. <laughs> <laughs> labradoodle? Come on, man. Well, Gio would definitely be a bulldog, just like look at him. Like the ugly ones, the with the, like the drool. No, Gio would be a fucking Rottweiler. Oh, maybe that, yeah. Or like a pit bull, that, one of those roided out pit bulls that's used for dog fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, the American bullies. Caleb would be one you like car- carry in your purse. <laughs> <laughs> a little yapper. You know what? Like Someone a, told like me. A Yorkie or a Pomeranian. Caleb, shut up. The one pound. Bad. You know what? Bad Someone smack in the nose. So we had a Germ- we had a German shepherd. Why is your Louis Vuitton talking to me? Oh, that's Caleb. We had a <laughs> So we had a German Shepherd. I had a friend tell me, they're like, you know what's true what they say? People do look like their dogs. And they're like, You look like a German Shepherd. I was like, What the fuck does that mean? How do I look like a dog? Are they trying to say you look like a Nazi? Uh, maybe I'm not German in the least bit. Oh, that comb over. <laughs> The ode to Mac- Caleb is not a Nazi. The ode, the ode to Macklemore. <laughs> oh god! You know the old Macklemore haircut that everyone used to make. I'm a poodle. Of. Come on, dude. Labradoodle. It's oh, different. What's your hair? <laughs> it's mainly because the hair. Not, I, ju- I just got this fucking hair. It doesn't matter. Even then, you had the Johnny Bravo before the high pomp. All right, <laughs> all right. I'll have to take my licks. Would you rather be a wiener dog? No, no. I mean, at least you're not a Yorkie or a Pomeranian. Thanks. Caleb would be a Pomeranian. It. I got it. I, I feel like poodles could be like a little nasty, too, at least. Like, yeah, they got a little bite to them. I got it. I got I got the joke, guys. What kind of dog would Jeff be? You're small. Smart one. <laughs> you're small. Uh, Jeff, what kind of dog would Jeff be? Let's think. Here. Jeff? Mm, what the fuck would Jeff be? Smart one. I'm not like a dog person, so I don't know a lot of breeds of dogs. What's that like a little fucking like the, <laughs> the hunting dog? Uh, Cocker Spaniel? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Bloodhound? Nope. What do they call it? Like the, uh, like the Australian, Australian Shepherds? Shepherd. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, maybe an Australian yep. Shepherd? You yep. said yep. Be smart, a, one. yep. smart one. You could be a husky. Bird dog. Bird dog. <laughs> Bird dog. Aw, uh, dude, you're a fucking... Uh, dude, I just had it at the tip of my tongue. What are those... You're like a beagle, bro. You're a beagle. <laughs> You're a fucking beagle. Do beagles have big lips and big noses? Probably not. I don't know. They definitely have a big snout <laughs> and those goofy ass ears. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know where we're going with the show, but I'd, I had a question for Jeff that I wanted to touch right. on um, about our overall tasting at Penelope. And I know we touched on like the glasses. We could have used like more than one glass with the, you know, not just like a bottle of water to rinse it out each time. So uh, if you could change that, we'd get a couple more glasses. And... Yeah, you know, you get a you get a glass for every sample. Mm-hmm. And like we said at one point one, um, we, um, you know, I noticed. I, I don't know if it was because of our group, but if it wasn't because you know he's not the normal guy that gives the barrel picks, I don't know. But uh, I noticed like a week later, they had like a tasty mat with, you know, four glasses. But it is what it is. It's all about compare. You got to compare. It's tough to have your uh, brain really like know, you know, you got to have two glasses, three glasses or whatever to really compare uh, your palate. Like, do I like this one? How does it compare to this? And go back and forth. Not like, all right, let's dump water into this. This glass has already been used by one. How does two taste? They did Dump- let us rinse it out with water. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but like, those are it's small things. But yeah. like, when you're when you're doing that, when you're traveling that fa- when you're traveling that far, you would expect that you want a better you know, there's experience. There's only you know four of us trying you know four samples, sixteen glasses. I think they have sixteen glasses there. I would hope someone's got to be doing the dishes there. Um. But no, overall, I think we took the glass home. We <laughs> we didn't even, they didn't have to do shit. We 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 picked a really good barrel. Um, my group, your viewers, are going to be very uh, excited for this. Um, 
it is a it's a really good MGP MGP uh, barrel, and um, we'll see how it goes. I'm sure you're gonna have really good feedback, and can't wait till the next one that we do, whenever it is. All right, and the the so this that was a two part question, and I know we got we had the pizza and the salads. What other in like all the tastings that you've done, you've gone to distilleries. What other food or like snack that they bring to you enhances like the tasting opportunity? My man just like, literally went to will it. No, no, Jeez. no. Um, well, I'm just saying, like, is like pizza's probably what, not the I'll best thing what, to do with uh, it. No, I tell you what. Um, I don't know about enhances it, but you go to France and do your 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 lunch is two and a half hours, and in between doing like. 10 or 12 tastings in the morning you have a two and a half hour lunch that you'll have more arm yak you'll have a few bottles of wine and then you go do more tastings the afternoon but the food is phenomenal in france um the food at whistle pig you have your personal chef at oh. whistle pig is phenomenal you have maker's mark you go to their uh restaurant phenomenal on site i mean there's some places that put out some amazing food for you so, um but enhances i don't i don't know man like you need i'd rather have like a full like you know full stomach let's go let's go have we just had a great meal hopefully nothing spicy to wreck your palate type thing but like um i think we had like chi- uh, like uh some type of deep fried chicken at um mm. at uh makers that was phenomenal it was after our pick so it was fine um Nice, but like, chicken. there's some there's some really cool cool places that put out some pretty solid food for you, and even though that you know, we had pizzas and salads or whatever, that was some people don't even give you food, so it's sure. that's a plus, you know. They they try to go that you know extra mile to at least feed you, where some people are like, come in, do the tour, an hour later out the door. You know, I, you know, I the one thing I do appreciate that uh, Penelope did, uh, besides you know not really trying us on their core stuff, is we got to try the Rio. We got to try a couple of other other rare um, offerings that they do. They had that like maple that was really good. They have a maple that they have never yeah, released. The never honey. released it. But it's know, so, like a project yeah, they're working yeah, on. The that project. was really good. Think the we, honey we did. Think we, the honey and maybe like the VDN barrel or something. There are oh, the yeah. the, uh, the rosa rose rose something rose maybe I don't know. They did offer us a lot of those after the pick, which was awesome you know, yeah that's, it was that's after one... we signed you were doing paperwork then all <laughs> that good shit came out yeah but um hey you know at least they didn't have to do that uh which is which was fun but you know that brought up the experience um you know just the minor things you know with them is just give us extra glasses that was the biggest thing i you know i could care less about a tour um they don't distill you could Google what a bottling line looks like, a Rick house, but like, let's just get down. And that's the thing is like, so many people are like, you like going on tours? No. Once you've seen one, you've seen them all. Unless you're going to a, you know, overseas, you know, let's see how the process done. And cause Armagnac was crazy. It was really cool. Um, there's like four or five traveling distillers that literally pull their, um this they're still behind their um behind their not car but like van they literally travel to each place and distill for like 72 hours and they're done then they go to the next place there's only like five or six of them and we met one of the top like the top guy and it was really 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 cool to talk to him um to see like the process of armagnac um it, it was it was really cool yeah, so what Jeff is really saying is, uh, Penelope, take some of that uh, MGP money and uh, invest in some presentation here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Caleb, I think it's that time, buddy. All right, time uh, for time another... to review that cigar, bud. All right, I, I got it. All right, so we'll start with the uh, Fratello Arlequin. Uh, appearance, I'm giving it a seven and a half. Uh, you know, kind of a little basic. The band was nice. I, I'm digging the colors. Um, it's all right. Uh, burn, I gave it a 9. No touch-ups at all. Just lit it once. That was it. So, no issue there. Construction, gave it an 8.5. Had a couple ashes dropping on me here and there. 
Uh, it was a little light to the touch. The you know when you had a good stack of dimes, it fell every now and then. Uh, draw did a V cut. Uh, eight and a half. It was a little tight. I'm not too sure what happened there. It just wasn't you know maybe should have won a straight. And uh, enjoyment gave it a nine. We got uh, Jeff from Rock Elite here. So with the boys again, we're back in action. Uh, gave it a nine there. Overall, eighty two and a half times that by two, eighty five for the cigar for me. All right. Uh, the Fratello Arlequin. I appearance I gave it an eight. I think the band's kind of cool. Uh, obviously, this is one of their newer lines, right? What is this? Uh, old line Nuvitola. Okay, old line Nuvitola. Yeah. That's a Corona Gordon, though. Yeah. Well, box press, so much. Yeah. The cigar itself, I mean, Vitola wise, looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's a cool cigar. Uh, the burn, I gave it a nine. Construction, I gave it a nine. I really had no issues with the cigar at all. The draw, I gave it an eight and a half. Uh, maybe that was just the fact that I. Uh, you know, had been smoking it for an hour and a half, and you know, I'm sidetracked over here. You know, running two shows, uh, the fucking arm bar broke, uh, all kinds of the crazy shit that I have to do. But the overall enjoyment, obviously, Life having Jeff is so on hard. is life so hard. It is so hard. Um, the overall enjoyment was a nine, giving me a forty three point five eighty seven overall. So I actually really like the cigar. So if you guys are out there and you guys are wondering if you should pick the cigar up. Give it a whirl. I don't think it's bad, and let us know what you guys think of it. I thought it was pretty good, and uh, yeah. Like all products from Fratello, I seem to really enjoy them. So, yeah. Geo? All right. I'm just getting into my last tally right here. But, uh, all right, just finished up. Appearance, I gave it a 7.5. I thought it was kind of basic, but, like, the actual Vitola, the scar itself, you know, box press Corona Gorda, I mean... To me, it just seems relatively uncommon, but, you know, this is the Vitola that brings out a uh, lot of flavors for your, you know, frequent cigar smoker. Like, that ring gauge and size isn't very typical. Like I said, typically Robusto Toro are the number one selling sizes here. But this is new for the line. They have those offerings, so I'm sure another size might be a little bit different in terms of offerings in that regard. Burn, I gave this thing an 8.5. I touched it up a handful of times. I mean... I had zero issues otherwise, like, even then, you know, we had some good conversation, and, you know, wasn't battling the cigar, wasn't perfect, but sure as shit wasn't, like, terrible. I've had cigars that just do not burn. And construction, I gave it a nine, I think I got, like, a fucking flick of an ash, I didn't pull it, you know, Jeff and wear it. Yeah. You know. Nope. (laughs) He also didn't smoke the same cigar. Yeah, well, that's just... Wait till my review. uh, (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Draw, I gave it a nine. I V cut and mine was fine, Caleb. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I got, you know, a great amount of smoke, you know, got the flavors I needed, burned great for me in that regard. And like I said, V cut, I'm sure a punch would have probably have really gotten, you know, that little extra oomph. Uh, enjoyment, I gave it an 8.5. Uh, Flavor wise, it didn't really do much for me. I just kind of thought it was like, I feel like I've had several versions of this cigar before but you know this is the fratello version on it again the little bit of that habano spicing was in there i'm pretty sure it was habano that they said was in the uh binder yeah, yes ecuadorian habano so a little bit of spice to it that brought my overall score to a 42.5 giving it an 85 you know smokable if this is what you like and what are into like you know i think the you know an entry level smoker to a you know somebody who smoke these pretty frequently can enjoy this cigar i mean me personally like i might have you know a couple laying around i feel like this leans more towards something i wouldn't mind giving away jesus christ dude listen you're a horrible (laughs) man no i don't mean that in a bad way like if someone's like hey man you got a cigar i can get off you yeah yeah here you'll like this like okay so not all right maybe not as bad as i thought like you know it's it's not my, like, go-to, like, man, you know, today I really want to smoke this Fratello. Like, I'm not shitting on the brand. It's good. It's just I don't personally, it it didn't it didn't go above that 85 range to me that when, like, I'm smoking a cigar, like, damn, this is good. And I smoked that thing down to the nub. That probably had a little bit more uh, to do with take two. But, hey, it happens sometimes. Jeff, what'd you think of your cigar, bud? I give mine an 82.5. Um, I lit it about 74 times. 
<laughs> because uh, I was that's talk- not being counted. I was talking and uh, forgot about it, but uh, don't know what it was. Don't know the rapper. Uh, looks like a fucking V cut, and <laughs> and we're good. <laughs> Caleb, <man. laughs> what was the Fratello rating? All right, it was an eighty-five point six six. You want to round that up? Eighty-six. All so right. good score. Well, above eighty-five, always a good. What's score What's the down. worst rating you gave on a? Uh, on a low seventies. Low seventies. What's uh, the highest? Ninety, like ninety-one, mm. ninety-two overall, something like that. I think that. something got like a 94. ninety-four. I think maybe the eye of the the not the eye of the shark, but the the Arturo Fuente, Fuente yeah. shark yeah. last summer. That was crazy. The uh, um, Destino de Siglo shark. Yep. Yeah, that thing was incredible. That's a, that is one of our like probably like highest scores. I mean, we don't give a lot of nineties out. That's for sure. That being said, guys, I just want to take this opportunity. Jeff, thanks for coming on, man. Dude, you are a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the whiskey industry. You are running one of the most successful barrel picking companies in America right now. I mean, dude, you are just absolutely fucking balling. Uh, as a friend, as somebody that does work with you, as somebody that like appreciates the work that you put in, I just want to say, man, we appreciate you coming on and spending, you know, a couple hours with us and just taking time out of your day to come on, you know, our first episode that we've ever done. Uh, it's no, great it's a, having you, buddy. I just like one it. of the boys, dude. I appreciate it, man. It's, uh, you know, I, as I always say, I'm very appreciative of everybody that uh, has got the group to where it is. It's just not me. I'm just the, the person behind the scenes and actually the the like main guy but it wouldn't be because of the uh the group the group's been great um you know we very appreciative of everybody that uh supports the group and it's always fun to talk to you guys and hopefully we can talk soon and about uh you know something sometime in october i have to bring that special bottle and we'll have to where have. are we going next to do a pick because i i feel like it's uh this is something we should do at least twice a year. Well, we should done, be doing this we, twice we, a year. We've done two, two. Well, I mean, a part. Uh, yeah. I mean, like this is a like one point five. Yeah, kind of one point like five. Kind of like tonight. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> got him. Nope. <laughs> but but no, like nope. uh, you know, I'm I'm waiting on some other special allocations, hopefully coming, and hopefully we'll know more soon about what else is. I don't need any more barrels this year um but something to start q1 would be pretty cool i like that all right uh anything you want to shout out before we close out uh, all your pages whatever shout it out i uh, just uh instagram dude rock ny elite barrel pickers give us a like uh follow us you know do whatever um it's only pictures usually stuff is sold out but uh if you're ever curious how to join the group DM me on Instagram and uh, we can talk. But uh, I appreciate anybody that loves, wants to explore new spirits and just bourbon and rye whiskey. We have all sorts of goodies coming up. We have a wine dropping in November. That's what we picked in France. And uh, really excited to uh, share good spirits with you know anybody that likes that shit. I love that. That being said, Caleb, any closing notes to the episode? All right, just make sure you tell your Aunt Sven down in Virginia Beach. Make sure she's still following the show, uh, liking us on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, on the TikTok. Just, you know, Aunt Sven, thanks for the like and follow. Appreciate that. And just, you know, tell, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell your cousins, tell your college roommates, you know, to let everyone know about Down to Hearth Podcast. All right, perfect, man. That being said, Jeff, I just want to say thank you one more time. Uh, make sure you guys are checking us out on a Cigar House or Podcast Network. The number one cigar podcast on Podbean. Uh, love it. Uh, Caleb keeps talking about Ants Fen. Nope. <laughs> that's that's how I'm feeling. Just just letting you guys know. You got to tell everyone. Tell your I, I took my headphones off because I got tired of hearing about Ants Fen. All right. That All being right. said, Gio, any <laughs> closing right. notes, bud? All right, top Peace. dog. Smoke them if you got them, guys. All right. We'll see you guys next Wednesday.